guys and welcome to the ICE Security Guru. I'm sat there, Rachel, and we have the top news stories for you this morning. Um, so Rachel, do you want to start? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So I'm going to be talking to you about Max and Trojans. So one of the bigger news stories today is to do with Mac, who are, as we all know, infamously unbreachable, or so they thought. So many researchers, including Ken Weston, who works at Tripwire, have stated that Mac Trojans are surprisingly easy to write, which is rather worrying. And the most recent Trojan is disguised as an executable file, so an MP3 or an image. And Ken Weston uh, points out that Apple's system of defense is to display the executable files under the file uh, extension .app, but according to research, this extension is rather easily um, circumvented. And um, Apple have provided uh, various software such as Developer ID and Gatekeeper as solutions to mitigate the risk of this particular Trojan. Uh, but they have to be enabled on computers by the users and also the other issue is they only work on uh, version 10.8 onwards of Mac software operating systems. And I bet that Apple are now regretting that ad campaign that they did with Mitchell and Webb where they claimed that the viruses PCs were catching were not going to affect their systems. So it doesn't matter. How um, times have changed. How times have changed indeed. Um, and I have um, a story from Lieberman Software, which um, basically they did a survey of Black Cat during the summer, um, and they've actually found that over half of IT security pre professionals have actually struggled to detect um, intruders on the network. Um, so it says here that um, according to the survey at Black Cat, they found that 52 percent. Um, of respondents that they weren't actually confident that their IT staff could um, detect data um, in the presence of an attacker attempting to breach their networks or extract private data, which, you know, is a huge, huge amount of, um, mm. of people. Um, and they also found that 63% of respondents believed that the state-sponsored hacker would attempt to breach their organisation in the next six months. 63% is a huge, huge number. Um, and in order to try and combat that, they found that 90% have actually made efforts to protect themselves, which is really good, but that shows that there's still 10% out there which are not, you know, trying to protect themselves and really not aware of, you know, the procedure in which they have to take. So, um, you know, it, you need to kind of, you know, attempt to tackle this in a way that, you know, is going to secure the, the systems. So, you know, it'll be interesting to find out over the next course of the year or so how that goes. So in other news, um, there's actually been a 16-year-old schoolboy from London who has secretly been arrested over the world's biggest cyber attack as part of an international swoop against um, a suspected organised crime group, um, which is crazy, 16 years old, you know. 16 no, years old. They start young these days. Yeah, <laughs> starting young. <laughs> um, and also, um, the new iOS 7 by Apple, mm. the new update looks far, very similar to Android, maybe. Um, they've actually found that there's been a security flaw um, and it's under scrutiny after someone's actually um, found a hack through the lock screen and um, bypassed all the locks, all the systems, and actually found a way of making international calls, which um, I'm yet to discover myself, so I might have a play around with your phone maybe and see what I can do. Yeah, my bill's going to be very expensive <laughs> then. And uh, lastly, Google's woes keep coming thick and fast. So Gtalk has apparently been sending messages to the wrong users and Lucy Ko, who is the judge on their current court case related to the misuse of um, email scanning and email data, has declared that they're in breach of wiretap laws. So that's not good, not good not news good. for Google. There we go. So that's all for today. We will see you next, next week. week. See you. Bye. Bye.